Well, we were just discussing as, as far as your writing goes. Um, the story of Lincoln has been told in so many different ways and so many different times. How did you come up with a new way to present it that was so intriguing? Well, you're right. Lincoln is the most overwritten person in American history. I think there are almost 18,000 books about Abraham Lincoln. And what I decided to do was write the story of his assassination and Booth's escape like a novel, but with all true facts. But write it like a novel in that I don't tell you what happens until it happens. I try to keep the true timeline beginning on the day Lincoln is shot and then the 12 days. So I wanted the reader of my book to feel like they were reading a contemporary newspaper or magazine about events happening as they unfolded. And the trouble with writing a history book is everybody knows the ending. It's like writing about the Titanic. How do you keep people in suspense? Everybody knows they hit the iceberg and they died. Everybody knows John Wilkes Booth killed Abraham Lincoln. So I thought the way I could do it was to use a novelist technique and tell it in strict chronology, day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute, to try to persuade you to indulge me by pretending that you don't know how the story is going to come to an end. So that's the technique I used. Now it seems like from reading your biography that um, you have basically been born into this role to pursue an interest <laughs> in Lincoln and I'm sure you heard that before as well. What did you learn as you were writing this particular story along the way? Well I, I learned a lot more than I thought I knew. I think that's true anytime you start a book. You, you think you know the story but you discover so many things. And what I discovered was so many fascinating characters who I didn't know about or didn't know much about at all. I'll just give you an example. When one of, Bo one of Booth's co-conspirators tried to stab to death the Secretary of State and some of his family, his daughter, Fanny, his teenage daughter, was in the house. And she wrote it all down in her diary. And it turns out that during her father's uh, service under Lincoln, she had kept a diary all along writing about the famous people and cabinet members and heads of state. So here's this teenage girl living at the center of power in Washington, D.C., recording her secret observations. And she was one of my favorite characters, Fanny Seward. And whenever you get into a book, you find someone or several people like that. John Wilkes Booth's sister turned out to be a fascinating character because she had written a secret book about her brother that wasn't published till almost a hundred years after he died. So there's always nuggets or treasures to, unfind, uh, to, to, to un, you know, unfold. And so finding these people is one of the great pleasures of doing the book. Well, what's so wonderful is that the characters seem to have already been in place for you to deal with because there's so many, these, all these characters are so dynamic because they actually existed and they had these very interesting lives. Yes. Do you ever feel like you have to have a creative outlet? Do you ever want to take on, um, take a character a little bit further than maybe what was actually true? Or do you always stick strictly with the truth? I, I always try to stick strictly with the truth because then it, it becomes novel. You know, some people have said to me, well, how do you know that Booth's eyes flared open wide when he entered uh, Lincoln's box at Ford's Theater? You can't know that. And I say, well, it's a scientific fact. When an eye enters a dark space, the pupils widen to take in more light. So I don't need to read that in a book, but it's a, it's a, it's a fact that I can add to the story to make it more dramatic, which certainly really happened. Uh, and, and throughout a book, you can find things like that because of the weather, the time of day, the season, uh, the way a wagon is made, or how a horse is saddled. You can add those elements to the story that no one ever wrote down uh, who was in your book, but you know that that's how horses were saddled, or that's how wagons were made, or that's how trains operated. Uh, so I was able to add a lot to the story that way. So do you work with a team of researchers that do a lot of this for you? Or no, you I do it all myself. I find that's the best way to work on a book. I, I want to touch all the sources, read them all myself, read them all firsthand, because no researcher is going to know exactly what you're looking for or connect story A to story Z in a way that someone hasn't before. So I prefer to do it myself. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your Thanks. time. Very My much pleasure. appreciated. Thank you. Thank you.